But at its core, I was pitching a family drama. Um, and I literally did not think they were going to go for it. My aspirations growing up was really never to leave the island, um, and I was very practical. I was, um, they, these may sound like jokes, but they were legitimately what I was, the, the options that I was exploring seriously when I was in junior high and high school was um, a trash man uh, because, you know, they they start really early and they get off early. So I thought then I could go run down to the beach and have like beach day every day. Um, a plumber. I was really going after like my grandpa always said county jobs. Or like if you want if you want a good job, get a county job. And so I was looking for things that that uh, I knew would give me some job security and just give me a good a, a good life on the island. It is one of the magical things about being on on an island like Maui where um, people are not defined by their careers so you typically aren't asking people like in LA everyone's like what do you do what do you do what do you do there it's just what like what did you do today did you go to the beach did you uh, like um, and nobody nobody really cares what you do for a living it's really just a means to pay the bills so you can go on living life and that, that's something that I really liked about that place. One of my first experiences in international cinema was Breaking the Waves, Lars von Trier's Bre Breaking the Waves. It's, you know, it's shot all in handheld, no score, no lighting, no, no fancy anything um, except just brutally good acting. That movie just depressed the hell out of me and left me depressed for about two weeks. It just like sank into my bones and just made me so uncomfortable. With I didn't re realize that movies could do that. You had to write a thesis paper about making your short film, right? I think there's like this, there's this search for truth in cinema when we're as filmmakers. It was also enlightening to just to just admit that everything we do is a lie. <laughs> like there's, there is no, everything we're just like, we're tr constantly trying to be magicians and even the dogma movement and stripping everything away that is considered um, the bells and whistles of, cin of cinema. When you strip it all away, it's just another type of trick. The best thing happened to me psych psychologically. I was able to say, fuck it. Like, I'm just going to do exactly what I want to do. Um, and I'm going to, to use this, this, the process of making this pitch. This goes down to like the, my, <laughs> my philosophy on like a short film is the short film. It's not the step to something else. And I was able to like make the pitch the art the the art piece that i was working on and the process of making that pitch was going to be for me um it wasn't going to be to impress marvel it wasn't going to be to to book a to book a job and i'm i really made it a very personal like therapeutic experience for me working on on this pitch and working on the fine family dynamics that i wanted to explore um, and, and truthfully, I didn't even know if I was going too far because I was pitching them a whole story. Like, and I put together a PowerPoint presentation, much like the one that you're doing today with like, which with uh, a lot of visuals, a lot of moving images that I took from other movies and from, you know, from other short films, from music videos. There were, I mean, some of the obvious ones, like movies from that were showing the different types of martial arts and Asian cinema that I wanted to pay homage to. But then there were, you know, I was, I was pulling clips from uh, um, the pursuit of happiness. I, I was clips that, that had to do with father son dynamics. Um, they, I, I also had pulled a lot of clips from 
from Chinese music videos and youth youth culture, um, Asian youth culture that I have not seen on movies portrayed correctly before. So there are images that that were just painting the picture of of what I hoped this movie could be. But at its core, I was pitching a family drama, um, and I literally did not think they were going to go for it. You know, the Mandarin has been a character that people have alluded to since the very beginning of, of the MCU. Um, and the, the mystery of the, mag of the Mandarin is some mysterious Asian bad guy somewhere out there. And immediately that's a, a stereotype that we knew we, we, we as in uh, Dave Calham and I, who were both um, Asian American, we just knew we had to shatter. We had to figure out how to shatter that stereotype and to surprise people with uh, a character that um, for for us would 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 surprise people on how much they can relate to this character, regardless of whether you are uh, of Asian descent or not. Tony is is an extraordinary actor. Um, I I don't think I've ever worked with an actor who is as um, where every take is not just great. It's like so great. It just is different. My directing with Tony happened before we even stepped on set and just talking about the character. Um, and then Tony goes through his process, which is from what I know about it is a, a little uh, excruciating. Like he really um, take, takes the time to delve into finding the, the soul of the character he's playing and creates a whole backstory that I don't even know about. The thing that you all can can protect, um, that you have full control over, is is your personal experience in in the process of of making whatever it is you're making or working on. I mean, that's not to say that you're not going to be on a set and feel like bullied or condescend it you know people just being an asshole because people are like that on set but you can you can still find the joy that you I think typically find a little easier when you're in film school you can find that in in the the real world I do think that there are sharks and there are mean-spirited people out there but I find more often than not that I'm hanging out with people who are dreamers who love to remember why they got into this in the first place who who are full of that childlike passion that's the reason why i love working in this medium because i i love the the process of standing next to people and watching them put their fingerprints on the same art piece that i'm working on